So this next part is where all the excitement begins. You're gonna be your own mixologist. I already like it. <laughs> I can You it, you it. <sighs> All right, I'm here with Kenny Straub. Is that how I pronounce it right? That's right. All right, with uh, Cork and Candles. Uh, he runs a candle bar. I'm going to let you talk mostly about it because I sure. will not describe it the right way. Sure. But this is one, your current location. That's right. And you're working on a second location. In about two weeks. All right. So yeah. before we get too far into any questions, for anyone that's super curious, what is a candle bar? Can you just describe that for someone? Yeah. So. We lead with an experience and our guests will come, they'll book a reservation in advance and we run it as about a 90 minute to a two hour experience. And during that time, we've got a scent library with about 70 cents in it and we'll guide the guests through the experience. Each person will make two eight ounce candles and we invite them and the reason we call it a scent bar is they get to figure out the scents that they like. We give them the creative opportunity to blend those fragrances together and create a custom blend that candidly has never been made before and will never be made again because they're picking the ratios that go into that candle. And so they may love a black teakwood and a pinion pine and maybe I like a 50-50, but you like a 70-30. And so your candle will smell a touch different than mine because of the ratios that we pick, even if we pick the same scents. And so after the 90 minutes, we'll accelerate the cooling process. Uh, we'll box those candles up. We send them home with the candles same day so that they're able to not have to come back, not have to pay for shipping or anything like that for us to send them to them. We actually sell here in our King of Prussia store charcuterie boards and flatbreads to pair as part of the experience. And so all the candles cool for about 30 minutes, they can get something to eat, something to snack on uh, and drink. And as you saw, we've got a retail section so they can explore that as well uh, while their candles are cooling. And what's your average, I guess, turnaround time for them to be able to take it home? Uh, at 90 minutes. Yeah, they can leave with it at the end of the 90 minutes. Oh, the whole thing is 90 minutes. The whole thing is 90 minutes, yeah. yeah. So what, what portion of that is the experience versus waiting? Maybe 20, 30 minutes of waiting? So if we walk through the scent library later, you may see that you can get through it in five minutes or you can get through it in 30. Okay. Um, as you'd be familiar, you can make a candle in five minutes. And so really the bulk of the experience is hanging out, spending time with your friends, with your date, with your family. Our tagline here is where friends gather. So we wanna be a place where friends can hang out, spend quality time together and just connect. And so during the 90 minutes, perhaps it's 20 minutes in the scent library, perhaps it's 10 minutes making the candles. It's about 20 minutes or so for the candles to cool. Relaxing, take your time and enjoy it with the people that you come with. We'll make some candles. Let's do it. So across the top, it's a little harder to see. It's easier to see out front, but here's some of those pairings. The way that you're really gonna flow through this, I'm gonna give you this, cause this is my favorite combination. And I think it's gonna be up your alley since you like the wooded scents, but you wanna blend fragrances together. The best way to do that is to uh, mix them right here and see how they smell together for you. So this is your pinion pine and your black teakwood. It's a little Christmassy, Hold on. but it, waft them in my face. And the pine wasn't too much. It wasn't like Christmas. Right. It's not like overwhelming you, um, but it's playful, right? So you do that with your guests, yeah. and then they do it with their friends, or they experience it that way. So then, you know, you pop these tins off. We do have the coffee beans and the sachets here, so you can get a little bit of a smell mm -hmm. and then neutralize the nose that way. Um, you know, I know you're a big fresh cut grass guy. Okay. I love that stuff. And the, the sea salt and surf is my favorite scent. So maybe together they are like a beachy grass kind oh, yeah, of Oh yeah, that's good. Yeah. So you get that's the sea salt, one. you get the grass. The, the fresh cut grass just really hits you in the face. It is a I very, love, very I love fresh cut grass. strong scent. And then you've got the note profiles, right? So uh, just like wine, fragrances are going to have a note profile. Your top notes are going to be your lighter molecules. They're going to burn off in the first five to 15 minutes of lighting the candle, but they're going to be lighter. And then you're going to transition into those mid notes and those base notes. And we want people to understand sort of what's behind the scenes um, and what's in there and get a feel for that. The sandalwood's been a really popular scent. A lot of folks will go for that. Uh, the Palo Santo is super popular. Love spell right out of Victoria Secret. Uh, I might try that pairing of the, you said it was her favorite, the Palo Santo and the Texas yeah. Tarragon. Yeah. The Texas Tarragon is going to be really fresh. 
Um, and then your Palo Santo is just it's a classic. Oh, yeah. Isn't that That's nice? Good. That's good. So right here, we run you through with a note card. So you're going to take a pen and a paper. Okay. You're going to jot your name at the top. We walk you through by section. So first, you're going to fill that out. Second, we're going to walk you over to the scent library. We give you a blank spot there. So if you like a scent and you're not sure you want to commit to it, you just jot that name down to revisit it later. And then when you're ready, you get to pick either one or two cents per candle. You write that in there, and then you can get creative and name your candle. Mm -hmm. We've got warning labels. You'll put your name of your candle on the bottom. It'll put, go on the bottom of your candle. And so you can fill some of that out. And then on the back, which we'll revisit later, here is your candle care. So everything from trimming your wicks, the burn time you want, um, extinguishing it when you leave the room, keeping it away from those dogs that catch fire, all, all of yeah. that stuff. So write down your names and then we'll get to making. That was my bad. Oops. These get dinged up from time to time yeah. and I always They're wonder 10. how. They're 10, that's great. Are you done? I've already picked it and okay. I named it Go already. Go show the camera what yours is. Cool. All right. So what did you... What do you want? Bergamot tobacco, black pepper, cardamom. It's called Diablo. Diablo? That's right up your alley. Uh -huh. Bergamot tobacco and black oh, pepper. Oh, I love bergamot too. I know you do. Ooh, that's good though. Uh, let's see. <laughs> you it, you it. I'm not mad. Oh, that's the Jacquard. Yeah. 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 That's a there's a popular men's fragrance that has a lot of that. In. Oh yeah. The fun thing about being in here is you'll hear some people just talk about memories that are opened up. So they smell the love spell and they're like, "Holy crap! I just went back to high school." Oh. Geez. Or oh, geez. Right. And and like, you know, maybe for my dad, the Acadia or the Pinion Pine uh, reminds him of Christmas with his parents when he was really young. And so like, yeah. there's these core memories that get tied into these fragrances that is just really, really neat to unlock and see when other people unlock them. But you can see how you could be in here for five minutes if you're like, I know what I want. Or if you want to go through all of these and then try pairing them together. I mean, like my wife is going to go one by one by one all the way through and I'm ping ponging all over the place. All right. All right. So it's a soy paraffin blend. We heat it to, and I'd be curious where you settle out on this, but we heat it to about 165, 170. Okay. Where do you go? Typical small batches, I'll do the same thing. Yeah. Around 165, 170. Uh, stir and mix, it cools a little faster, less yeah. amounts. And then depending on the jar, it usually will set up fine, but at higher pour temps, you might get a little more sinkage you gotta fix yeah. occasionally. Lower you pour though, yeah. perfect tops. That's you don't have to do it. That's don't have to do a damn thing afterwards. <laughs> Yeah. What? What? Oh, don't she's using coconut. coconut. No, she's using coconut. I know. It's Co well, What's it's in not that? Yeah. Co coconut temp. and certain paraffin and coconuts love high temps. Yeah. Like, wow. You've got to be up there. Yeah. It's like, yeah. so I heat it up to the point, mix and stir at that temp, pour I hot. I let it marry. Because when you get into let this, those bubbles you see get tons of videos that are like, if you heat it too hot, yeah. the fragrance oil comes off. If you Most of that is all bullshit. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. And we've learned that from testing. So this next part is where all the excitement begins. You're going to be your own mixologist through this part of the process. You've already picked your two fragrances for your candle, which is a great place to start. But what comes next is you're going to now pick the ratio. So you've got a small metal jigger. Part of the science in candle making is getting the right fragrance to wax ratio down. So you're going to fill the small side of the jigger all the way to the top. You're going to mix the fragrances as you want to do them. You're going to start with just a couple drops of one, a couple drops of the other, and then in here we've got perfume sticks. So this will allow you to stir the fragrance, see if you like that ratio, waft it by your nose okay. and see what you think. And when you do that, you'll get, start to get a feel of how that ratio will blend. If you want more of the Palo Santo or more of your, is it the Texas Tarragon? Yep. If you want more of that, then you'll add that to your liking okay. and then you'll fill it all the way up to the top. When you're done filling it to the top, we will uh, bring out the wax and we'll get started with the next step. Take your uh, warning label and you're gonna, name, you're gonna put your name on the bottom of the warning label. You're also gonna put the name of your candle. Thank you. um, so get Diablo on there. And then you're gonna stick that on the bottom of your candle vessel. What'd you name yours? Diablo. Uh, let's see. Shoot, I don't know. I didn't think on that. I'll have to come back to mine. I'm not sure. All right. I'll add it later. You can just All right. I want, to, I want to sample yours too when you're doing them. So let me waft too. 
<laughs> okay. Well, you went a little over crazy there, didn't you? I, but I know what I like. Oh, that's true. She, so she already knows. All right, I'm gonna go. Oops, just a few drops. I did a little more than a few drops, but that's all right. It's okay. It's not much. You're gonna use those perfume sticks, and that'll allow you to get a blend on the stick, and then you can bring that up to the nose to give it a scent. I already like it. <laughs> I can smell it. And this is the part of the job where at the end of every day you get to go home smelling fantastic. Okay, let me waft yours. I haven't wafted mine yet. Oh, okay. I'm just kidding. <laughs> What 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 are your two again? Um, bergamot, bergamot tobacco. tobacco and black cardamom. I'd be curious which one you add more of, or if you do 50-50. This is one that one of your staff likes. Tell me if that's fairly close as far as ratios. Oh yeah, I I love the Palo Santo. I love it. It's like a really nice base mm -hmm. scent, and uh, you definitely seem to have more of your Palo Santo right now than the Texas Tarragon. I do. And if you want a fresher, uh, more Maybe florally scent. Add yeah. a little bit. I'm more. a weirdo. I do like the florals. I do. If it's black dahlia, it's yes. so universal, um, and it's not so like gardenia, like in yeah. your face. Yeah, gardenia is so pungent. Oh yeah, my God. it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. We have a gardenia here. It's really, really strong. Yeah. Okay. Oh wait, I literally was gonna pick that up and smell it, and I have a stir stick. Yes, we we that aim absorbs to eliminate fragrance. that. I like mine. I'm good. You're very precise in your measurement over there. I like it. <laughs> Five minute experience, 30 minute experience. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This, this is why someone says, how long does it take? There's a, it's a very wide range of, do you know what you like or do you want to be exploratory in the process? And the difference between the two of you, you said, I'm going to use the same end of the stir stick. I'll get close enough. And she's got individually spaced out pieces. <laughs> so I could go back so she knows where was I at 60, 40, and 30, 70, and 50, 50. If this wasn't a common pre-made blend, I might have been a little more meticulous. But you said this was already a winner, right? It's already a winner. <laughs> That's so funny. Well, That's I have definitely. To I need to reference. <laughs> if you think I'm remotely surprised with this, I'm not. Just... <laughs> I think I'm almost done. Yeah. It's We're great. not sure of the ratio anymore. She's she's on an uh, adventure right now to figure out the perfect combination for her candle line. She's and then like, totally going to forget what it was. She's working right now. I know. I don't know if we have time for this, but if you want to make a second one, we could do that because I realized you wanted black pepper cardamom and I brought you black cardamom and cream. So I got ah. Well, are you still so if you're wondering it? why yeah, it's a little I still bit sweeter. Like it. Yeah, I was like, if you're wondering, this is not spicy. Yeah. Well, I can give you the other one real quick and you can- Can I just put a little bit of spice in yeah. there? Yeah. Diablo's fire. Diablo's fire. I, don't I mean, have, I think it smells good. I don't have chili peppers, but- Well, you're on unit one. This is unit eight. <laughs> I think it smells good. It does smell good. I, this excited. is better. We'll fill the rest up with the spice. If you want to run it back with a whole nother one. Uh, so we've learned a lot through Oh, this is going to be perfect. It's going to top it off with a few spicy notes. Can I do the half your stick, please? <laughs> I have yeah, an entire free stick, stick, actually. Oh, thank you. Okay. So if you are ready, I'm ready. You're going to go ahead and pour your fragrance into your candle vessel. We're going to use those metal spoons to stir in the wax all within your candle, and I'll go grab you some wax. Okay. So go ahead and pour this in. That's fabulous. Right. Go ahead. That and pour is it. fire. Pour it in. Pour it in. Don't miss. This looks great. I did. This smells good. This is my science. This is Gary's science. <laughs> well, oh, because so we funny. had to, so the progression here. Oh, I, I, I noticed the progression. Your last one smells much better than the first one. It does. It does. All right, so you've got hot wax here. It comes out yeah. about 170 degrees. You're going to go ahead and pour that into your vessel. You can pour the whole thing in there. You can then set that down after you've poured it. Uh, once you are done, you'll go ahead and move that wick back and forth and stir around it. It'll serve for about a minute. So in the normal experiences, do they sit at tables like this and you bring, it goes just like this? Or? So our chandlers will take three to four tables at a time, uh, guide you through every step of this process. You would have two candles instead of just the one. Yep. Um, but otherwise it would look almost they, You exactly bring the wax the to them just like yep. that. That's yep. cool. Bring you the wax. Good. Good. All right. I will take it from here. All right. These will be ready in about 15 minutes. Nice. Sweet. I didn't smell yours. Would you do Palo Santo and 
Texas tarragon. Thank you. Thank you. What's one already did it? What? You took what they did. It was a recommendation. I just messed with the ratio a little bit. Put more tarragon in. I like that. It smells like a cologne. Mm-hmm. Talk about the scent library a little bit. So you said that people can mix any scents profiles they want. Yeah. And when they're doing that, someone might know that they like a, a sea salt and surf. Surf, there you go, right? So they don't necessarily know what would make a good ratio though. Do you, you generally offer some recommendations or? Yeah, let's talk about it. So you leaned in on a scent from our summer seasonal, which is our sea salt and surf. Okay. We provide you an overview of the note profiles that are in there, but at the bottom, the, the question that you asked is answered. So we recommend oh, what I see. might pair well. well. Okay. And so if you jumped into maybe a mahogany teakwood instead, we give you a little bit of, maybe it goes well with some of the scents that we're listing. So perhaps it's a lavender or maybe it's a pine or a citrus. And certainly you can go outside of that recommendation and pair it with whatever you'd like, but you know, to walk into a scent library with 70 different fragrances can be yeah. incredibly overwhelming. We've broken it down to try to remove some of that uh, overwhelming feeling by breaking it into five categories. So we've got an earthy, where you might find a black teakwood. We've got our seasonal, which rotates quarterly. So today we're in our summer seasonals. Uh, we have a sweet and fruity. So maybe you're finding a melon, a raspberry, a strawberry, something like that. Or maybe you're finding a sugar cookie in the sweet fresh and floral. So one of my favorite scents is our succulent oak moss and agave. Really complex mm -hmm. profile there, but a really fresh scent. And then we've got your exotics. So we've got Love Spell in there. We've got uh, Volcano as a really popular one and a few different options. So Drakkar, Dragon's Blood might be another popular exotic scent. So you can walk in and say, I know I don't love fresh and floral. I'm going to stay away from that. And I can head over to the earthy where I know that I'm going to Really enjoy that. Have you noticed yeah. from doing, because this shop's been open for about a year and three months. Yep. And yeah. have you noticed a trend in, in the type of scents that people tend to flock to the yeah. most? Yeah. What do you find? So uh, my favorite combo is pinion pine and black teakwood. Um, another one, so we have some of our employees' favorite combinations, but like a pink grapefruit mm -hmm. and uh, like a volcano, two very citrus scents go okay. really well together. Um, but we have about 150, maybe 200 during our busy times, 400 guests through in a week. And so with that, there are just, and each person's making two candles. So we could make 800 candles here in a week through all the experiences that come through. And there's just so many different combinations so that happen. Yeah. It's hard to keep track. So are these example of the, the eight ounce jars that you offer? Yep. yep. So you so get a white. Wick them. Okay. And we'll rotate colors. So out front, we've got a periwinkle, we've got a teal green, we've got some gold and silver, we've got white, okay. amber, black, and we're constantly looking for different suppliers that we can bring mm -hmm. those in through. Yep. Created something that I see something catching on to your store, but then it's something personal to them. Yeah. So there's a candle shop down in Charleston that I, I'm sure you know well that, yeah, so they do based on numbers instead of based on names for that exact reason, which is just a fun, uh, different way to approach yeah. it. Because, I mean, when you think about candles, it's not just the scent that is your experience. It's the sight of it, both, both in how the flame looks. Do you go with a wood wick that's got a soft crackle? So now you have a noise with it as well. But there's just so many different senses that are stimulated through the candle mm -hmm. uh, and through an experience, right? You're spending quality time, you're eating, you're tasting, you're drinking. Yeah. Um, but to, to blind one of your senses would be a fun way to do it differently. Speaking of experiences, we might we might do one here. Yeah. Just to kind of show what it's like, what it looks looks like. Carrie, I'll do one for sure. Maybe I'll do it with you. Maybe we'll both yeah. do one. You both will do It'll it. It'll be fun and that way everyone can see what that looks like to yeah. a degree. The other fun thing that for me, I, I was not a huge candle lover. I didn't buy a ton of candles before we opened this. Um, and so I've learned so much about what I really like in going through and smelling all the different scents. Mm -hmm. And so it's fun to watch someone walk through and say, I know I love eucalyptus, but then they smell something different and they're like, wow, I never even 
realized that that was something I was interested in. And so that's that's a good point. I think some of my favorite scents now are things I didn't even know about. I never yeah. until I got into candle making. I didn't so even like know what, what that was. What, what would be some of your well? I've noticed today? that I like saffron over time. Yeah, um, and I that was something just new to me. I would have never even even thought of that. Most I love a lot of earthy scents. So is Carrie. Yeah, and. I don't, I wouldn't have even known what half those names meant or were until I got starting to get involved with fragrance. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of an example off the top of my head, but. Well, you had asked me like, does South Carolina have dandelions with the petals of dandelions? Yeah, if, for yeah. example, where you're at yeah, makes a big I difference. Yeah, I would never know what that smells like. Yeah. Because, like, I don't know, like things like that. Yeah. I like the wine thing. Because yeah. you could say, mm -hmm. oh, what you're smelling is actually close to oud, so let me venture you over here. Yeah, yeah. And the cool thing with making two candles as part of your experience, you could say, I want one that is more my traditional, yeah. that I love, and maybe I want to venture out into a different path that I don't normally buy when I go shopping for a candle. One of the things we love about the concept of the candle experience is, as long as you figure out the science and the way that it's made, everyone that comes through is gonna have a great experience. Whereas if you and I went and did a painting concept, which I've done, I'm not a great painter, but uh, you know, my dad is a, a really good painter. And so we're gonna have wildly different experiences just right. because of our skill level. And so when you start talking about saffron or the ouds, for folks that are in the candle industry, we know what maybe some of those scents smell like offhand. But part of this is an education of, hey, if you've never really spent a lot of time trying to understand the note profiles of the different scents, you can look through this and for a teak wood, you can smell some of those complementing note profiles that exist in the candle. So you right. can introduce some of the technical aspects of the candle making without really overwhelming and saying, you know, you clearly don't know what you're doing, right? We want this to be inviting and inclusive for everyone that comes through. You want it to be process driven too, because yep. you need to be able to scale it and franchise it if you mm -hmm. want. And that takes something that's simple and repeatable, teachable yeah. and uh, less, less complex. So. Do you have like a Candle character, like you teach them how to properly trim wood. Oh, yeah. That they need to go home with people that just think you just light it. So, so, so we, that's included in the spiel that we get at the end of the experience. But at the end of the experience that the two of you walk through today, you'll go home with a candle care card that says everything from, you know, burn between one and four hours and trim your wicks before you light and keep it away from your pets. Because actually, interestingly enough, my sister uh, has a burn -a doodle She said she lit a candle. And she had heard the don't leave it near dogs. And she looks over and her dogs leaned over it and his top of his head is on fire because the long curly fur had gotten over the flame and just, she, and she had to go put it out. The whole I've, head was. I've seen cats tails catch it's on insane. fire. It's yeah. insane. It's absolutely crazy. I just forget and leave their house too. I mean, I know that happens a lot. So I don't know what your experience is like, but I never thought in my life that I would, my wife would tell me to stop burning candles. Um, and as part of this experience, we want to do a lot of testing. So we lived in a 1600 square foot apartment in Philly. And there was one time she came home and I had 37 candles burning throughout the two bedroom apartment. Yeah, that's overwhelming. And I'm also trying to say, well, what happens if someone leaves this burning for eight hours? So I'd burn them overnight yeah. and I got scolded pretty bad oh, yeah. for- That's just too much. It's too much from your senses. I do little bits you've here. You've got to do your testing, but you've also got to yeah. be mindful of- That's the. That's a major challenge when you're much. in a small place. People starting off in a, a bedroom or a, yeah. a basement or a, a whole apartment. It's just, it's hard to ventilate that. Or one of the things that you talk a lot about on your channel is like, you want to do wick testing because what we've seen is different fragrances burn differently. And so the only way to really do a lot of wick testing yeah. is to do, and the candle may burn differently at the top than it, it does, does at the bottom. So you've got to really run it all the way through its life. And so how do you go through testing all your different scents Takes time. Unless you, or you burn a lot at the same time yeah. and then. Yeah, you, you just don't have a choice, honestly, yeah. unless you have, eventually you have space. And you know, yep. with the, like now with the warehouse, I can do a hundred of them and I won't even right. really notice it. But right. it, yeah, you, you just have to do what you can because there's no choice. You have to, I mean, talking about different fragrances, I could take one jar in the same wax. Yeah. And I'm, you know, I might use Premier Wicks and 70% of them might use a, 735, some mm -hmm. will use 730, some 725, 40. Yep. It sizes, there's no universal size. Yeah. So it takes a lot of testing. You don't, you don't know that until you do. Right. But right. that's also a benefit of the testing too, is you can, a lot of times two wicks will work well. Yeah. So you know you have a backup plan if, if, yeah. if one doesn't go well. She's like, speak for yourself. I can't find one that works. Well, after wasting a year of wooden wicks, 
So, so we were talking yeah, about that. He's yeah. kind of, yeah. I, lo I love the wooden wick. I love the crackle. I love, you know, all the different things. But we've actually had people that came and made a candle with a wood wick and sent an email saying, I, I let it cure, now what do I do? <laughs> and it's like, well, take yeah. the flame to the wood and you'll have a candle. But wood wicks for folks in the candle industry may be really familiar. And for those that have gone through the testing, know how difficult they can be to work with. Mm -hmm. But for someone who's only bought candles occasionally and is used to the Yankee candle that they buy in the store, they see a wood wick and it's foreign in some cases. So. Yep. But it's so easy to trim that I almost like the wood wick. They are they are easy to trim. Yeah, yeah. Snip it right off. off. Yeah. Right. I'm just like one would work perfectly. Yeah. Yes, you got it. You you can make ten candles exactly the same, and half will burn fine, the other half won't. There, it's one specialty wood wick, and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. So they can be frustrating. So do you offer that? You, you said you did. So we did. We um, so a lot of what we've done as a business owner is we want to get open and we want to begin offering our experience. And we've learned along the way, we've gotten some things wrong and we iterate on it. And so one of the things we tried because we did a bunch of testing and thought it would work really well is with our 70 different scents, we offered one wood wick in, the, in a standard size vessel with a particular type of wax. And on all the testing we did, it worked perfectly. But when you start offering the opportunity to mix different fragrances and you get an uncalculable amount of variations, all of a sudden you're gonna have one or two guests a month that say, I made a candle and it's not lighting. It's not that I need to trim the wick. It's, it's just, it's not working with the wax and the fragrance combination. And as a candle experience, you're expecting to be able to burn and enjoy your candles no matter what. Mm -hmm. And so we had to pull away from that. I wanna talk a little bit more about why you picked candles. How'd, yeah. how'd you get into this specifically? So, so there's really two stories here. One is that my dad and my family has always been very entrepreneurial. My dad's been making candles uh, since he was about 12 years old. He actually used to make these novelty Christmas tree candles and sell them door to door in his neighborhood as a 12 year old on a wagon uh, and do that as a hobby. He would take newspaper mache and then pour the wax in there and then dip it in uh, the, the green pillar wax yeah. uh, and was doing that for years. So he's had a little bit of history with candle making. Um, I'd worked at an investment firm for uh, several years in the private equity industry and just wanted to do something more entrepreneurial. And so was looking around at a few different businesses, saw a concept like this, really fell in love with it. And uh, we started going down the path of, is this something we could get into? And then the two of us, so my dad and I are business partners in this. And we jumped into this after doing a little bit of research on it. And Again, the entrepreneurial background that he had and sort of the passion and the interest to get into this that I had uh, married up really well. Married well and yeah. uh, candles, we think it's just a medium for spending quality time together. Again, back to our tagline of where friends gather. Yeah. So core in what we wanted to build was something where people could come together and it could be candle making or it could be something totally different, but creating that environment for an experience was something we really wanted to achieve. And a lot of the furniture that you were talking about is custom built by your dad and including yep. the new store that's going to be open. Yep. Soon. So uh, he's a woodworker and all of the furniture up front is made of recycled wine barrels. Uh, we've got a love seat up front and we've got some tables uh, as well. And the stools were all ones that, that he made. You said you have anywhere between, was it 100 and 400 or 100 and 200 customers? A week. Or experiences a week? A week, yeah. So roughly, either weekly or monthly. How much material do you go through? Like wax, cases of wax, pounds. So, so we'll probably have about 2,000 candles made a month on average. Eight ounce candles? Eight ounce candles. Okay. So you can do the math on that. We're ordering, you know, cases of wax and five pound fragrance oil containers uh, pretty consistently. Okay. Um, we're fortunate enough that we've got some local suppliers, but we also yeah. order from other national suppliers. And it's been a huge learning curve. Right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Lots of testing. So maybe even ordering more than we need to fulfill those 2,000 experience candles because we're doing testing, things like that. How often do you cycle through new scents? So we'll change out the seasonal scents quarterly and then the regular scents will keep you around. Uh, we had had some other scents that we just didn't really love that we sort of pulled and replaced. And so as we test something new that we really fall in love with, or maybe we are using a, a fragrance that we think burns cleaner and so we want that one instead of something else, yeah. then we'll change those out. Um, but we like to keep the core experience yeah. sense uh, consistent with the seasonal ones being what's rotating. Candles that they're making to take home, are they using, uh, are they late, 
label lists or are they using custom labels or so we'll, we'll put it we'll put a label on there if we do a private party maybe we do a corporate event something like that maybe we'll do a special custom label for that otherwise we've got a pre-made uh avery label that we'll just, just like slap a template on for them to use yep. and well we actually make it and, and oh, i'll show i'll show it to you when okay. we make one later it'll be consistent it has our name on it our logo and then handmade in King of Prussia. So what's the goals for the business after this? Where's your next steps? So yeah, so we'll have a second store open in about two weeks. Yeah. And then the goal is to turn to growing this nationally. We wanna take this and, and grow it out, um, ideally through the franchising model. So we're working on some documentation there, which is a whole learning experience yeah. in and of itself. Franchising is, it's, yeah. it's different, yep. it's different. So, so we were fortunate. My, uh, my parents have been franchisees in uh, yeah. Brewster's Ice Cream for about 16 years now. So we've been on the receiving end of a franchise engagement, and we've always sort of looked at it and said, could we be on the franchisor side of the table? Um, I love working with business owners. So uh, in the private equity role, it was one of the favorite things that I got to do. And so to be able to work hand in hand and partner with franchisees and help them build and scale and grow their business and hand them the playbook that candidly yeah. takes out the testing that you and I have yeah. both <laughs> racked our heads against the wall with, yeah. uh, would just be a really nice way to do it. And, and then in the candle industry, maybe there's uh, less of a focus on the business side of it, the profit and loss st statement side of it, and more on the creative and the artistic. And so to be able to partner with someone that maybe has more of a passion for the creatives and the arts mm -hmm. and work with them and coach them on the business side of it to help build a better experience as a business center for them seems to be a really valuable way to, to try to build out the franchising. That's, that's a good idea. What do you guys do from advertising marketing? So a lot of it's, it's been word of mouth. We've had some really great success with some local uh, Instagram influencers or bloggers uh, coming through and doing an experience and posting a reel about their time in. And then we've really tried to design the interior of the store to be something that's very photogenic so that folks will just have a lot of user generated content. Yeah. And so unsolicited, post it on their own accounts and spread the word of mouth that way has been a really big yeah. win for us. Now we're different, right, than a restaurant or a, an ice cream yeah. parlor or things like that where you might come back multiple times a week. Um, sure. And so, you know, getting in front of people at the right time to bring them in for Mother's Day or around the holidays or for a birthday or something like that. Um, is, is the goal. You've got to get them at the right time. You're family oriented, right? So there's a love Nana. Yeah. Is that your Nana? That's my Nana. Okay. So uh, on our non candle products, we have uh, it's called Roots Signature. And if you look really closely on anything labeled Roots Signature, there's a little signature that says with love Nana. Mm -hmm. And so my Nana was my dad's mom. And my dad's mom passed in 2017. Uh, but she had a huge and profound impact on who I am and certainly who my dad is. And uh, we wanted to keep her with us through uh, what we built here. And so from our teas to our bath and body products and anything that's not a candle, we've labeled it with love or uh, Ruth's signature. And then her signature with love, Nana, was pulled off of a birthday card that she wrote me back in 2001. And so we put that on there to keep her with us. Marketing within itself, people resonate with more, but also I think a lot of that is a personal experience. People will hundred percent, like, and it's relatable. I mean, mo most yes. of us have maybe a similar feeling uh, about our own circumstances. Exactly, um, yeah. but it, it does. I mean, one of the things we also love about this business is it's a fun place to come to work. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a fun place to spend your time, uh, and you leave feeling good. And, and folks have to eat, right? They've, they go out to restaurants, sometimes they're in a bad mood. Maybe as a server, you don't have the best experience. But for the most part, folks show up here with a smile on their face and they leave with a smile on their face and they have a great time yep. all the while. And so the family environment, the team dynamics that we've been blessed to have with our entire staff, uh, and then just the engagement we've had with our guests that come through has just made this a really fun place to just spend quality time. Yeah, you can tell working. your staff like working here. I mean, yeah. that's, Cause you said that you have nine to ten yeah, we've staff? Got, yeah about nine or ten yeah. part-time staff and we have a general manager yeah. uh, who's full-time if you just have any things you want to share too just i guess maybe tips for you know people get involved in a new candle business even if it's not a candle bar just yeah. like general yeah i think um you know i've i've heard you mention it maybe on one of your videos um but a, a common theme that my dad and i talk a lot about is uh, to just get into the game. And so you're gonna face some sort of adversity. Maybe it's the candle testing's not gonna go well. Maybe it's gonna be hard to find those customers in the beginning when you're getting started. But just by getting 
out, putting yourself out there, starting it, and forcing yourself to figure it out has been a lesson that I've learned through this yeah. um, that my dad really encouraged and sort of pushed me forward to say, let's just get in the game and we'll learn and we'll make mistakes and that's okay. And we try to share that with our staff that when they make a mistake, it's just an opportunity to learn from mm -hmm. it. And so I would say for anyone that's watching, that's interested in starting their own business or going in and, and branching out and doing something different, um, it's going to be scary and it's going to be difficult and it's not going to go perfect and it's not going to go according to plan, but, but get in the game so that you can learn and make those mistakes and learn from them. And, uh, yeah. and that's been a really cool part. And to do that with family, to do that with my dad yeah. has just been really cool. Yeah. If you can do it with someone, whether it's a friend or family, someone yeah. you're close with that have the same goals, it's yeah. like, it makes it so much better. So yeah. much better. For anyone, it is stressful. There are times I get home at like eight and I'll take a meeting with the website team or something like that. Yeah. And then it's late nights, but how much do you love yeah. what you're trying to do, what you're yeah. meant to do, what you're going to accomplish? You just got to work hard and get there. I love that. And I use my full time job to fund everything that I need. The first several years of me doing this was hobby, fun, learning. Just yeah. a side thing. And then yeah. from the moment I decided to turn it into an actual business and, and actually jump in, it was probably a couple of years yeah. of uh, being able to replace full-time income yeah. or, or even exceed it. I've worked in corporate America yeah. for my whole career and in corporate finance. I was a finance and accounting yeah. double major in school. And, and I, you know, I, I love what I do. Yeah. I love the team that I work with. I love the people that I get to spend my time with. Mm -hmm. I, it's intellectually stimulating for me to keep my career going because it challenges me in different ways than maybe this business challenges yep. me. And, and I think if you said, what do you want to do, A or B, I don't know that I could pick necessarily yeah. because I love sort of both. If it's something you're able to do both, like yeah. you actually can do it emotionally and mentally and physically, then sometimes that works great for people. It really depends on what resources someone has. Starting from scratch, they're having yeah. to start with a little bit of funds here. It's just they have a couple hundred dollars a month from extra from a part-time job or a full-time job yeah. to contribute. It's a slow, slow growth. Slow build. And maybe that ultimate goal is just to have a, uh, a website that's making, you know, three or $4,000 a month. Yeah. And they're just trying to replace something smaller. Yep. It, it just, just depends on what you're trying to replace. So I think, I think maybe one of the other things, because you touched on it, if you can do both, emotionally and yeah. right and so that's the hard part in in entrepreneurship when you're doing a billion different things and you're juggling all these balls yeah. um in the corporate job if you've got a ton of stuff that's on your plate and the boss says this has to be the priority it's very easy to say well if this is the priority then this is going to come down yeah. on the list but in the entrepreneurship world when <laughs> you've got 17 different bosses and usually they're not all hitting at the same time but when that one time comes and they all flare up at the same time, you can't turn to different stakeholders and say, this isn't a priority because for each of them, yep. that's the only thing that they've got going with you and it, and it has to be a priority. So when the day job gets really busy and the home life gets a little hectic and you've got one store opening and a second store opening and you're working on franchising documents mm -hmm. and all of the balls sort of start falling at the same time. Yeah. I was talking about this, I think with a friend just the other day, but. It resonated after watching that video that I texted you about, the one that you did uh, just a couple weeks ago on sort of vulnerability, because when those things all happen at the same time, it can be emotionally challenging or testing. Yeah. And so, but, but for me, part of the entrepreneurship piece of it is it's fun to sort of step outside that comfort zone and just stretch yourself, because that's where I think growth happens, is oh, yeah. just outside that circle. So, but there you go. All right. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. This was really fun. Yeah, I, I had a great time. Yeah, pleasure. Thank you, Thank you very much. This is an awesome experience.